Hey y'all, Johnny Mullet here. It's story time. Hope you all like story time because that's what we're doing today. The reason being is I don't have my bus out there to, you know, show you anything that's going on or any updates. But anywho, I just got back from vacation. I went to Florida in Pensacola, down at the Gulf Shores, they had a, uh, a Geo Metro meet. It was the eighth annual Geos on the Gulf. And it was a pretty cool event. Um, I went down for the first three years, and then I took a few years off, and I just went back down. I wanted to get away for a while, um, you know, kind of chill out, relax, unwind. So I took about five days off, and. I went to Florida and I had a wonderful time and I got extremely sunburned. I mean, I'm like totally burnt. I actually had to buy this hat because of the sun. I'm not really a hat guy, but man, I found this hat sitting on a shelf and slapped it on my head. And my buddy's like, dude, that looks good. I'm like what? I said, oh, okay. So I bought it. So here we are. But yeah, my sunburn is uh, pretty vicious. My skin is peeling. It was a beautiful 80 degrees, sun shining the whole time. And I think uh, I headed out Sunday morning and it rained pretty much the whole way home. But that gave me a chance to uh, not get any more of a farmer's tan going on, you know. But anyway, the first thing I did pretty much um, I came home and I crashed. I mean, I got in the house, I brought a few things in from the car, and uh, I crashed. Now, speaking of the car, I just wanted to let you guys know that my 2017 Mitsubishi Mirage, it cost me $68 in fuel to get to Pensacola, and it cost me $65 to get back. So, average uh, 40 something miles per gallon, can't complain. Did a great job. But anyway, uh, first thing I did when I got up is the old lady's like, hey, the floor is done in the bus. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, it's pretty much done. Um, I think we're going to be able to pick it up. I was like, okay, cool. So can we go over and see it? You doing anything? You know, you got anything going on? She's like, nope, let's go. So that made my day. I went over. And I'm totally blown away. Um, I would have loved to build the entire bus by myself. And, you know, it would have been a pretty huge project for me. But uh, I don't feel bad paying an Amish guy to do the work. And the reason being is I can't do the kind of work he does. I mean, he specializes in that kind of work. I specialize as a mechanic. I can do mechanic, you know, repairs. I can do all that, but I can't do carpentry. And granted, let's say I decided I'm going to do the whole thing myself. It would have took a long time, and it would not have turned out very nice. I mean, for instance, when you first step up on the bus, there's the armrest for the bench, right? And it's beautiful. He routed the wood. He fitted it, and everything's just beautiful. If I would have did that, it would have been two two by four stuck together with screws down in it, you know, with some varnish on it, and I can't do it. So I don't feel bad paying somebody to do what something that I can't do or something that I can't do properly. I'm not saying I couldn't have did it. I probably could have did it, but it would have never looked that good. And I said on an earlier video. I wanted new materials. I didn't want to repurpose and reuse. And I'm glad I did. Um, my next video is going to be a uh, detailed walkthrough of the bus. Because it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. He did such a great job. Um, I gave the guy a huge tip. I mean, he gave me a quote. I told him, okay. And... 
I'll supply all the wood, materials, or whatever you need. I had to make a few trips up to the Home Depot. Uh, I had to make a trip to Lowe's to get him everything he needed to complete it. And I guess when it came down to the last few days while I was on vacation, he had to get a couple odds and ends. He had a friend come over and he, he hitched the ride and picked up a few more materials. But after seeing the floor, I mean the entire bus, I was just blown away. So I paid him today, I gave him a huge tip. And I also tipped his wife because she spent with her kids a few hours cleaning the entire bus. They pulled all my um, window blinds, cleaned all the windows inside and out. They cleaned the dashboard. They wiped everything down. It looks absolutely amazing. Amazing. And another thing I wanted to talk about was my, my solar system. Um, when I dropped the bus off, I told him that everything you need is right here. And I showed him the power distribution box. I showed him the dome lights, the LED lights, the power inverter. I said, you can plug in whatever you want and power it. And believe it or not, um, the weather just broke here, but last week was terrible. Cloudy all week, hardly any sun. Absolutely horrible. But he tells me, the bus is magic. I'm like, magic? He says, I ran my table saw, my circular saw, my jigsaw, two battery chargers for my cordless drills. I ran lights. I worked way into the night, two, three o'clock in the morning some nights, and the power was always there. And that really impressed me. And pretty much through my daily visits, I've been keeping an eye on it. And right before I went to vacation, it was actually snowing. Um, I think the last video I posted, I said it was supposed to snow, it did. We got some snow, we had no sun. And when I visited the bus, it had the red light shining on the charge controller. So the solar panel light was blinking, telling me that it was charging, but the battery light was red, telling me it was discharged. And I was like, oh boy, what's going on here, you know? And I looked and it was 11.2 uh, volts. I was like, wow, you really? He said, yeah, I was up late. I was up till three in the morning with all the lights on and like, is everything okay? He said, yeah, it still works. Um, I said, well, if the voltage gets too low, you'll probably hear a beeping noise. And if you do, you have to shut the power inverter off. And fortunately that never happened. He said the next day, this was when I left, it was still, you know, cloudy, but the light eventually turned green from red. So the batteries did recover. And as a matter of fact, when I went over today, they were sitting at a float charge. So that really makes me happy that my basic solar system, a basic 200 watt solar system with two golf cart batteries and a power inverter ran everything that that guy could throw at it without a hitch. So I don't know why a lot of these bus builds I see, you guys are running, you know, thousand watts of solar, 16 batteries, and you're running house wiring and 110 volt everything in your bus that's not the way to go um i watched a lot of bus builds and uh steampunk or i'm sorry steampunk steve he built his bus completely 12 volt and he's only got a couple panels and i like that idea i like the idea of simplicity so that's why i built my bus entirely 12 volt except for the refrigerator and power inverter and like I said, the only other 110 volt accessory I'd probably run would be the a coffee pot, you know. So we have our 12 volt electrical system. We have our 110 volt system, basic, no circuit breaker box, no fuse panels, no excessive wiring. Simple. I want to keep it simple. And that was the whole goal of building the bus is keeping it simple. And he was so impressed when I pulled in and I, I showed him the power inverter and he's like, so the electricity works? I'm like, the electricity works. He says, ah, it's magic. 
That's the magic bus. Yeah, got to chuckle out of that. So, right before I went to vacation, we went to a couple of upholstery shops. And the reason being is that bench is over six foot. And I need to make two cushions. I need to make a bottom cushion that's 17 inches deep and 74 inches wide and a top cushion that's 12 inches tall and 73 and a half, 74 inches wide. And I wanted a four inch foam bottom and a two inch foam back. And we were getting quotes anywhere from 750 to $1,200. Now, part of this is the materials. I decided to choose a, a good material. And the material is called Krypton. It's like top of the line stuff. It's very, very expensive. But you gotta think, this front bench on the bus is gonna get a lot of use, a lot of sitting, a lot of moving around. I didn't want an inferior material. And I didn't want cheap foam. I wanted something good. So I told my Amish friend the quotes I got for the cushions for the couch. And he, this was awesome. He's like, you should see my brother-in-law. He lives up on the one road there, not far from you. You should go see him. He'll, he'll do much better. Like, okay. So today we went back to northwestern Pennsylvania to the upholstery shop because we were going to go ahead and order our $700, $750 cushions. Nobody was there. Um, it said, went to an appointment, be back later. I was like, oh, great. So what do we do? And I told the old lady, I'm like, hey, our Amish friend Moses told me that his brother-in-law does upholstery. Let's stop there on the way home. Like, really? I said, let's do it. So, we stopped there, and this is awesome. His name is also Moses, just like the guy who's working on my bus. It's his brother-in-law, and he's seen the bus. All the Amish have seen the bus. He's already got the measurements. Because when I was talking to my construction guy, Moses, about what I'm doing, and I told him what it was gonna cost me to build the cushions. He already took it upon himself to tell his brother-in-law that I might be stopping by, and I'm glad I did. I stopped by, and he had the same exact booklet with the samples for the material. He had the same one that the other upholstery shop had. The same exact color we wanted, the same foam. His shop was clean. There wasn't stuff piled up everywhere. It was clean, organized, and it's gonna be Amish built. So that's, it's cool. He gave me a quote today for $550 to do the cushions. He'll have them done in three weeks. It's done deal. I paid the man in advance. I told him, okay, let's get her done. I'm not messing around. Um, the weather's getting nice. Come, you know, first week of June, we want to start camping in it and testing it out and making sure it's all good. So he's building our cushions and he gave us a fabulous price. And I, and I couldn't believe the same exact materials were there. It's like, yeah, the material, I think I told you guys, Krypton. It's a 100% polyester, but it's a very durable material and it's stain proof. And the way we built the cushions, we wanted them so they had like the seam around the top and the bottom, on the back, on the bottom. So we could flip them and rotate them, do whatever. And, uh, this brings me to my next subject, which is the Amish community. And not just the Amish community, but pretty much everybody. Ever since my Amish buddy has gotten that bus over in his driveway and has been working on it, he's been getting company every single day. This is no lie. Anytime that I went over to visit, which is almost every day after work, I'd go over and visit. There would be anywhere from five to 15 people there. Amish people, English people, whoever, construction friends, checking out the bus. And he tells me, he said, this happens every day. 
I come out and work and people start showing up and they want to see the bus and I was like wow man is that why you're working up till three o'clock in the morning he said yeah when I went down there the day before vacation this totally blew my mind there was a 15 passenger full-size e350 van with new york license plates in his driveway with all these amish guys and when i got there you know um kind of talked to him i'm like so who's these guys from new york he said oh they from the jamestown community um last week when my cousin had to go to a funeral she told a few people that I was building a school bus, a tiny house, and they wanted to come down and visit the bus. <laughs> this is this is crazy. And another time I was down there, it was me and the wife, and we had a friend with us because we wanted to show my friend. And uh, we get there, and this guy in a pickup truck pulls up, English guy, you know. He gets out of the truck, and he's walking up towards the bus, it's like, what you guys doing in there? And my wife yells out the door, we're building a house. He's like, yeah, right. And he steps in, he's like, holy crap, you are building a house. So it's pretty awesome. I mean, his attention to detail is just fabulous. He used his router to make the wood. He faced everything off. He, he made everything just perfect. And when we were there and my friend was there, she brought up a point about the emergency exit. And she said, so how are you gonna use that emergency door with the back wall blocked off? And I said, I can lift up the bed and we can crawl out the back. She said, huh, I'm gonna see you." So that was a challenge. I had a few of these in me already. I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's make sure I can get out in case of what? And I, I even said it, all right, honey, all right. Let's assume that my famous power distribution box had a malfunction and I had a huge fire in the front of the bus and we had to get out. Let's make it happen. I wish they would have videoed it because, I mean, it took me like a good 40 seconds to get out. But I lifted the bed, grabbed the wood, propped it up, crawled down between the two by fours, lay on my back, opened the emergency exit, pushed it open, and pulled myself out. So, I still have a rear emergency exit. Just in case you were wondering or wanted to bring it up that, hey, you blocked off the back wall. But I assume in a real life, you know, situation or scenario, I'm probably going to have like storage and stuff under there. But even then, if there was an emergency, we could easily lift the bed up, pull everything out, and we can get out. So, it's good to know. And as a matter of fact, I get to bring my bus home tomorrow. So I got to, I still didn't get my license plates on it yet because I was going to do it today, but I ran out of time. I got to take my title to the Ohio Department of Motor Vehicles. And I got to get the title switched over from a bus to an RV. And in the state of Ohio, you can do a RV conversion on a title and... You can do this after you meet certain requirements, like a, a sleeping area, a food prep area, a bathroom, um, a sink, you know, a way to cook food. So I basically go down and I sign an affidavit David stating that the conversion was done. They transfer the title into an RV title. I then take the RV title next door to the license branch and they can issue me an RV tag. So I'm probably going to do that a week from today. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring the bus home. The bus is nowhere near done. Don't even think it's done. I have to paint the ceiling. But before that's done, we have to stain all that sanded plywood. And it has to be sanded down smooth, all the little scuff marks and any imperfections. We've got to get that all done. And then we got to... Stain the wood the same color, that summer oak stain. Stain everything, the walls, and then we got a polyurethane. After that step's complete, I can then use lots and lots of frog tape and paint the ceiling 
and get the sealing done. And that's going to be the next process. And it's not going to be an easy thing. But after those two steps are done, the staining, the poly, and the, the painting, we can do some fun stuff. We can decorate. We can, you know, our cushions will probably be done by then. We can get our little pillows, our curtains, the bedding, the shower curtain, you know, all the little things that sort of, you know, make it yours. So... My wife is very, very excited about this stage of the bus right now. I mean, at first, she was kind of going along with it. Hey, you want to do this bus thing? That's fine, blah, blah, blah. And she's helped me a few times with her friends, you know, staining wood. But now that this construction phase is done, she is totally, totally into it. And she can't wait to go camping. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to go camping this summer. We're going to use it as many times as we can. And the best part about it is we don't need to go to an RV park to camp. We can camp anywhere we'd like. So this is my update. Uh, I know this entire video was story time, but I like story time. And I know some of you like story time. Nothing wrong with a little story time. Plus this, you know, gave me a chance to describe, you know, how the Amish community is all you know, crazy about the bus, and there's people traveling from New York and all over the place just to see it, and it's a very exciting, exciting moment, and I can't wait to bring the bus home tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure since the days are longer, the weather's finally getting warmer, I'll be spending a lot of nights out in that bus getting it ready to go, so that's our update for episode, I think we're 24, 23, 24, I don't know, I'll figure it out when I upload it. But I just want to thank you all for watching, hanging in there. I try to promise you guys a video every week just to keep you up to date, let you know what's going on. Um, so I think we're going to end it right here. And uh, when I get the bus back tomorrow, I think maybe in a few days, I'm going to give you guys a, like a detailed walkthrough. Because I want to show you the detail that he actually put into going to work. I mean, he didn't just slap boards together. He literally finished the boards and used the router on the boards. And he did such a beautiful job. So, thank you all for watching. I'll give you an update next time. Have a great night. See you later.